Hello gorgeous people, what is going on and welcome back to another video. In today's video we cover a very interesting analog horror series. Today we're going over Poppy Playtime. Now that's not a joke, some of you may have heard of Poppy Playtime before, but for those of you that haven't, I'll give you a quick recap. Poppy Playtime is an episodic horror game, where you play as the ex-employee of a toy making company called Playtime Co. And you decide to revisit the factory you used to work at 10 years after all the employees went missing. Little bit of a spoiler, but when you go into the factory, you end up finding out that some of the toys that you used to make are now alive and trying to kill you. And the whole point is to find out why all the employees really went missing 10 years ago. Now I actually have played chapter one and chapter two of this game before so if you want to go watch those the links to them will be in the description down below but the reason why we're making this video today is because chapter 3 comes out very very soon and leading up to chapter 3's release mob entertainment has released four analog horror styled videos that have a lot of lore implications for what's going to happen in chapter 3. so i thought today we could watch them all try to see what's going on in some of them because they're actually really cool and really well done and i thought this could help build up hype for chapter 3 especially because i do plan on releasing a chapter 3 video when it does come out in a few days as always, if you guys want to go watch these videos for yourself at any point, the links to them will be in the description down below. But here we go, let's jump right in. Video 1. Disappearance. We've got eyes on 1170. He's uh, heading south along the utility vehicle route. What exactly do we do here? Um, okay, give us a sec. We're gonna try and cut him off at the crossing up ahead. Keep him from getting onto public roads. Keep tailing him for now, and keep us updated. Experiment 1170 exits the facility through an open delivery bay door in the production wing. Two staff members witnessed the incident and hit the emergency alarm. Ooh, okay, so it's just Huggy Wuggy, gotcha. That's who 1170 is. I was like, what the hell is 1170? All right, so the date for that was June 18th, 92. Interesting. 10.30 p.m. All available security staff and vehicles are mustered and begin pursuit of 1170. By this time, 1170 was estimated to have traveled a half a mile from the facility. I don't see him. Ten thirty eight PM, the security team attempts to block and surround eleven seventy at a railroad crossing. Three rounds of tranquilizer darts are fired, and eleven seventy is hit once in the left leg. Eleven seventy manages to flee into the woods. Okay, so they're not trying to kill him, they're just trying to put him to sleep so they could bring him back. But he was hit once in the left leg, so he might fall asleep soon? Security team splits into small groups and continues after 1170 on foot. Oh, I do see him. Okay. Thought I was seeing things for a second. 10.50 p.m. to 3.38 a.m. The search area expands to over four square miles, extending into nearby residential areas. Okay, so now the public might see him. Outside of effective range, the security team's radios become unreliable. Rip, so even if someone finds him, they can't radio back? Oh, dead deer. Huggy Wuggy just killed that for fun, or...? Why'd that actually kind of get me? <laughs> During the search, several staff are killed by 1170. Even more go missing. How? How is that legally handled? Like, do the families of these victims know, like, Huggy Wuggy killed them? Or is it just framed as an accident? How is that handled? Because don't these people technically work at, like, a toy factory? So for them to die, it's kind of like, mmm, a little sketchy. Don't be like all the silly characters in the horror videos I make. I guarantee you, when they get injured in some of these accidents, they are not getting compensated. That's why if you're ever injured in an accident, you should check out Morgan & Morgan. When you're hurt, you deserve to have the best on your side. Because your serious 
injury could be worth millions. Insurance companies often lowball client claims, but Morgan & Morgan fights to get you the money you deserve. Insurance companies know it, and now you do too. The firm does not settle for lowball offers. Just in the past few months, Morgan & Morgan saw verdicts of $12 million in Florida, which was 34 times the highest that insurance was offering. The firm is not afraid to go to court to fight for the biggest award possible to compensate you. All law firms are not the same. Morgan & Morgan is the biggest for a reason. They've won a lot. And the fee is absolutely free unless you win. It takes only a few minutes to see if you have a case. Did you know that you could start a claim with America's largest injury law firm in just a click? It's super easy. You can start your claim now with Morgan & Morgan at www.forthepeople.com slash immortalmarcus or you can click the link in the description. Thank you so much to Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring today's video. Even more go missing. Damn, that one's up in a tree. Five casualties. To oh, total casualties. Five dead, six missing. It takes nearly four hours to relocate and sedate 1170. How 1170 was able to access the ventilation system without security's realization is beyond me. It is only blind luck that we found him before somebody else did, and it cost us lives. The innovation department is not happy. I am not happy. L. Pierre. Leith Pierre. Playtime Co. Head of Innovation. Damn, so he that's how he escaped? Is through a ventilation system? I mean, with creatures like this, you should probably have very, very tight security. Dude, hold up. I didn't look at him standing there just by some like random person's house. So I guess this is when they found him like right here at 338. Maybe that's why he stopped moving because the, the tranquilizer started setting in a little bit. Imagine walking outside your house and seeing a gigantic version of a toy that your kid has <laughs> with glowing eyes like that. That's actually terrifying. I don't, I don't know if you see it. I thought I was tripping earlier, but yeah, now I definitely see it. You can see Huggy Wuggies right here, but it's so quick. That's actually a really cool detail. I like that they did videos like this. I hope they start doing this more often. I feel like they made these just to give like some content in between the game chapters because I think what it's been almost two years since we got chapter two of Poppy Playtime. But these are still like really cool and a good way to get like just a little more lore on what's going on. Honestly, I don't think there's going to be too much for us to like deep dive into these with. But uh, let's jump into the second one. Video two. Relocation. Tape contains unexpected footage tampered with by a third party. Destroy tape. Wait, all right. And it's, we're two seconds in and I'm already pausing. Bigger bodies relocation guide. Do not continue viewing this tape. I know all these videos are technically restricted, but do not worry. I approved you. But bigger bodies relocation guide? Wait, like dead bodies? Playtime employee training number six, Biddy, bo <laughs> Biddy Bodies, Bigger Bodies Relocation Guide for internal use only. Step one, retrieve a giant from storage B. Oh, I guess maybe they're talking about like Huggy Wuggy and stuff like that. Because they're huge. Oh. Hey there. Why is she just standing there like that? Step two, safely secure the giant. Kissy Missy from the games was way nicer than Huggy Wuggy. Damn, I can't, kind of feel bad seeing her like strapped down like that. Step three, load giant onto train. Oh, so they transport them using the train from the last game? Wait, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Step four originally says consult the bigger body's handbook for contingency plans. But now it says loosen the straps binding the giant. So somebody's been tampering with these tapes, maybe. This is 1995, so this is three years after the last video. Step five, inform the conductor of the intended route. 
Yeah, this is literally the train from chapter two. That's pretty cool. I wonder if that's the same code on the wall there. Probably is. Oh, okay. It says something on the wall there. We'll go back. All right. So step six is keep watch of giant during transit, but it says release the straps binding the giant. So somebody wants Kissy Missy to escape here. Step seven, release the straps, but it's supposed to be delivered to a new location. Damn, this train is moving, bro. footage missing okay so interesting that kissy missy still hasn't moved there's blood all over kissy missy so did kissy missy kill these guys and then just go back into position here or did someone else kill these guys and just release kissy missy the only reason why i think kissy missy may have actually done it is because of the blood like on her mouth here hmm, that's interesting though but if you saw here when they're driving past look right here there's something written on the wall there the hour of joy is at hand. Okay, that's kind of cool. If you notice and look really closely, you can see that her arm moves right before the lights turn on. See how her arm is kind of up a little bit, but then it comes down and then the lights are on. Okay, so in this one, we did have a few very tiny details, like the words in the tunnel and then like her moving her hand. I'm almost wondering if there's more that I'm missing here, but I don't, I don't think so. Okay, so I was looking through the comments and someone pointed out that you can actually hear screams at this point in the video, even though Kissy Missy's kind of just sitting here. So yeah, that could mean that Kissy Missy actually wasn't responsible for killing all those workers. It was another giant or creature or a toy, whatever you want to call these things. Obviously, everyone thinks it's the crazy experiment that we saw at the end of chapter two, the one that takes away Mommy Longlegs' body. And I think that's honestly the best guess. I feel like they probably would have shown a toy that we knew about already instead of keeping it secret like that. But all right, let's jump into the third one. Video three. Restoration. Is that my boy, Bron? Test subject is 59 year old Thomas Clark, a full time employee at Playtime Co. since 1955. Damn. Six months ago, he was diagnosed with terminal lung cancer. Now, Mr. Clark of Sound Mind has volunteered for this experiment. We have eye movement. Can you hear us, Thomas? Bro, what? They put him in the toy? 1199 displayed much more disorientation than we expected. Subsequent mental testing metrics were also cut practically in half. It's just conjecture on my part, but I don't believe he knows where he is or what's happened to him. To make matters worse, the other experiments could tell 1199 was different. Wait, that's crazy. Oh, oh. Oh, they're kind of like isolating him. That's really sad, actually. Oh. They would have killed him had the research team not intervened, and oh. even then, there was still significant damage to the internal structures with some of the anatomy, namely the larynx and the thyroid, having been completely devoured. It took 12 hours of surgery to stabilize 1199. We keep him separated from the others now.
and that's just it. That was so depressing. So this worker was diagnosed with terminal lung cancer. He decided to, I guess, volunteer for this experiment of being put into a toy because it was either he died or I guess he lived on as a toy. But they do say that he may not be totally aware of what's going on. So imagine not knowing that you volunteered to do this and now your soul is like inside this toy. So for a second, I thought this was implying that all of the toys were maybe previous workers that were experimented on, but they do say that the toys notice that he's very very different and they do treat him differently so i guess the toys are alive for some completely different reason i still don't believe in the game we know why the toys are alive and how all that works but i guess this is the first time that they did like a human person inside one of the toys looks like we got huggy wuggy here then we got like the mini ones i'm not sure what this is here then we got pj pugapillar but then we also get pj pugapillar on the other side too or at least a bigger one but who attacks him this all this looks like some kind of claw here it's extremely hard to tell who who that is attacking him but bro was left in horrible shape god damn that's so sad and then from then on, they just kept him alone. I wonder if we will see this guy eventually, because that's really sad. Braun doesn't deserve that. I like these videos a lot too, because they're adding a lot more horror to the series. I think that Poppy Playtime is actually scary in itself. It has good jump scares. It's a bit of a creepy vibe, but this makes things way darker. Like seeing the toys kill another toy like that so brutally, like leaving him in just like a pool of blood there is very, very dark and definitely adds a lot more. Okay, so that was the end of like their little analog horror horror series that they did they made like three videos like that and then the rest of these are basically promos for chapter three but some of them are still in the analog horror style in a way because it's like old tv shows and old clips but these are more centered around the new game that's dropping so here we go let's jump into those video four catnap recall What's the time? Playtime! Woo! Playtime Co. S-M-I-R-E every day! Smiling Critters. Okay, guys, I promise. All winds blow away. Eventually. Oh, who's this? Oh, hell no. No, what? Catnap! Please help us go to sleep, Catnap. We need it, Catnap. Please help us. Sleep. Everyone knows Huggy Wuggy and Poppy Playtime, but are your children safe from Playtime Co.'s latest toy? What you've seen here is Playtime Co.'s own Smiling Critters, a limited series cartoon meant to celebrate the release of the toys sharing its name. Yet both now face the fire sparked by the inclusion of one key member. This is Catnap. And like the others of his line, you just pull his little tail and seems innocent enough. However, parents across the country report their children experiencing strange and often violent nightmares. And beside them, their little grinning catnap doll. Now with controversy growing, Playtime Co. has announced the recall of all catnap toys from the Smiling Critters line. His image cleared from all promotional material. But damage already done, will disappearing be that easy? The exact cause of these incidents still unknown, only one thing appears glaringly certain. Your children are not safe with catnap.
I'm not gonna lie, I kind of like that one the best. That was so creepy. This cartoon is so well done. Like, why does bro pull up like that? Bro was in this crazy storm all on his own, pulls up, and then just literally just like like gas vomits all over them and then they get so happy and they're all just knocked out but still with those smiles on their faces and he's just there alone and it is very creepy to note that it seems to do the same thing in real life but it gives your kids nightmares too i'm not gonna lie i kind of want one are they selling them right now oh my god they are they're pre-order oh my god that's amazing on the website it says red gas not included <laughs> All right, guys, let me know in the comments if I should cop catnap. I already got, hold on, who we got here? We got Huggy Wuggy here. I got Killy Willy here. And then over here, you could see Kissy Missy hanging up here. And I think that's all that I have for right now. There's actually two Huggy Wuggies back there. There's one hidden here. But let, let me know, should I get catnap? I, I feel like he's kind of fire, I'm not gonna lie. All right, and now what this has all been leading up to, the chapter three game trailer. Video 5, Chapter 3 Trailer. All right, we're going to, we'll go through and read these after. Play care. Wow. Our very own on-site orphanage. But it's not only that. It's a school. A playhouse. A place to belong. The kids used to live here. Now look at it. Whose voice is that? A lot of new arm mechanics. This is your answer. The hour of joy. Whoa, what the hell? All that awaits you are incomprehensible horrors. <coughs> Smiling mouths full of teeth and meat and plastic. <coughs> this world is theirs now. Welcome home. Dude, that's fire. That is fire. Yeah, and I'm not gonna lie to you, I already know the release date, but. Okay, so a couple things I wanna go over here real quick. So, so they already said in the trailer, the place that we're exploring is like Poppy Playtime's orphanage. So I guess they had an orphanage like in the factory where they took care of kids, raised them, gave them an education. Cause they said it's like a school too. There's like a play zone. So I'm guessing since the smiling critters are so important and they are showing like, you know, that they took care of kids down here, that each of the smiling critters is probably an experiment that a kid kid is inside. That's probably why we got that brawn tape is because it was just to show like, yes, it is possible that you could put these kids inside these toys. So I'm guessing there's going to be one kid in each of the smiling critters. Like you see, they show, they already show four kids here with their faces crossed out. Then let's take a look at this project proposal experiment 1188 bigger bodies initiative play care in continuation of our work experiment 1188 aims to leverage with our golden path forward iterating upon previous success as can be found in experiment 1180 or is that 1160 as well as the blank of experiment blank we believe we have the opportunity sophisticated capable of bigger body to date 1188's intended role for use in home sweet home as blank with blank 
be every bit reduce the risk of prematurely decoupling the brainstem from the spinal cord all right jesus christ this has got to be some like insane procedure to do on a kid so yeah we honestly don't get a lot of information here but it does say bigger bodies initiative so i'm gonna guess they're putting them in larger toys which is probably like how we see this big guy here this is probably one of the smiling critters that a kid is inside of this chapter just looks like overall darker in general like the lighting of everything the fact that it's so far underground compared to the last chapter Chapters. Yeah, like this must be another smiling critter here just by the eyes. But then there's also these like really small ones here. You see that? That one's really small. Oh, it says run up here. Oh, and then we get Kissy Missy and Poppy. Is this outside? No way, right? This can't be outside the factory. I doubt it. And then of course, at the end here, we get our boy Catnap, who looks way crazier than his toy version, way creepier. And you can see the red gas. So I'm sure that's something we're going to have to avoid in the game. Oh my God, is this Boxy here too? I thought Boxy was only in. Uh, in the multiplayer version of the game. That's cool that he's, I guess he's canon in the regular games too. But overall, I'm super excited for chapter three. I'm happy that we got to watch through all of these just because it does seem like that some of the ideas in them are going to be very heavily used in chapter three. Like the whole like, yeah, humans can be experimented on and then put into toys. The hour of joy is coming. Obviously, Catnap is going to be like the main villain of this chapter. So yeah, we definitely needed like a lot of this information walking into chapter three. Now, I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to be streaming chapter three yet or if I'm just going to upload a video of me playing it. But either way, scroll down below to the subscribe subscribe button and be sure to hit that bell. Also, if you haven't seen my other Poppy Playtime gameplays, I'll be sure to link them in the description down below. You're definitely going to want to watch those before you watch the chapter three video that's going to come out. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to drop a like on it. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. We're trying to hit a million subscribers before the end of the year. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next one. Peace.